But with a big tool, and I squeeze very hard. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I did do that. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, not you. Yes. Right. Oh. Yes. You mean, okay, it, it takes a minute to gel. Ah, I did it. Thank you. Thank you. Then I'll only get pay you. Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Mom, where are you? I'm here. Mom. I'm coming, Sammy. We're late for school. Let's go. Oh. The sink was broken. I fixed it. Yeah, right. What, you don't think I can fix the sink? No comment. Ah. You don't think I can take care of us? Nope. Well, I can. Hey. Trust me. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Mom. Honey? Bye. Wait. A little early for Chanel. What is it, a breakfast date? Lawyer meeting. It's almost over. As of tomorrow, I am officially a single person. <laughs> Who are you kidding? You're terrified. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm okay, really. I, I'm excited. It's gonna be a whole new life for Sammy and I. You gonna sell the house? Not yet. I'm trying to minimize the changes for both of us. So you wanna go for lunch? No, I can't. I got a ton of shopping to do. Sammy has four birthday parties this month. Well, at least one of you has a social life. I told you I could fix you up with a terribly rich, terribly old, terribly sick man, a dying man, arthritis so bad he can't touch you. You have no shame. had a brother who did some prison time. Uh, he's had drug problems, nothing violent. He lives in San Francisco, we barely speak. And you had nothing to do with his conviction? No. Well, uh, maybe it's something to do with your husband, uh, something he hasn't told you. We're divorced. How long have you been divorced? Six months. Well, actually, it'll be final tomorrow. Was it mutual, or was there some bitterness? 
Have you ever heard of a divorce that wasn't bitter? Not in this town. I assume you got the house, right? Yes. Five million dollar house, eighty thousand dollar car. Cash? Two million. Oh, but you got half. And how much a month? Fifteen thousand. Does he own his own business? We owned it together. And, and you got custody of the boy, right? He has visitation. Did you take him down? Were you awarded anything else? Our house in Aspen. Right. So, you and the mister have an admittedly bitter divorce in which you come out with the $5 million house, the Mercedes, a mill in cash, half the man's business, and 15000 a month. Plus the kid. And the Aspen house. Now, anything happens to you, the kid gets it all, right? And who gets the kid? Let me guess. Oh, I could say a lot about my, hus my ex-husband, but he's not a murderer. Mrs. Blake, I got people whacking each other for their sneakers. Now, look. You call this number any time, day or night, it'll get to me. You see anything suspicious, or Is if your it? husband tries to... What am I supposed to do? Honestly, Mrs. Blake, it's nearly impossible for me to do anything else right now. I'm not going to stay here and put my child's life in jeopardy. Where are you going to go, Mrs. Blake? people when we met when we got married and I changed that's a part of growing here your dad changed too so you stopped loving him that way love like that when people get married Lucky if you can keep it. It's not like the love I have for you that goes on forever. Hi, you've reached the Blake residence. We can't come to the phone, but leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks. Hi, Mrs. Blake. Uh, yeah, this is Sergeant Ross calling from Scarsdale. Uh, I won't be handling your case anymore. I wanted to tell you that myself. Federal agents are taking over. Federal agents? Why? Oh, hi, Mrs. Blake. Uh, yeah, you're going to be contacted tomorrow by a Kevin Nicholas with the Department of Justice. Will you be there? Yes, but what does that have to do with the Department of Justice? Look, I'm really sorry, ma'am, but the truth is I have no idea. Now, I'm sure this agent Nicholas can answer any questions you have. I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Sergeant? Hello? Hello. This is Special Agent Braddock. We're with the Department of Justice. Come in. You should ask to see some ID, Mrs. Blake. You shouldn't just open your door to anyone. Sergeant... Detective... Sergeant Ross? Yes. He, he told me that you would be coming this morning. Well, you still should ask to see some ID. May I see some ID, please? 
You really should examine them more closely, Mrs. Blake. <laughs> Mr. Nichols, is that right? Nicholas, it's printed right there. You should... Mr. Nicholas, if you want to come in, come in. If you're here to shoot me, then fire away, but please don't tell me what I can and cannot do in my own home, all right? You've invited us in, that's correct? That's correct. Why don't you just tell me what this is all about? Maybe we should talk in private. Sammy, honey, could you go upstairs and play in your room for a little while? I have some business to do with this gentleman. Who are they, Mom? We're kind of like policemen, Sam. They don't have badges. Sure we do. Want to see? I have a car collection with 120 cars. Want to see? Tell you what, we have to talk to your mom for a little while, but why don't you go and set everything up, and then I'll come up and look a little later. Okay. Would you like to sit down? By what right did you have to take the police department and Sergeant Ross off my case? What do you know about your husband and his business dealings, Mrs. Blake? I asked you a question. I'll be the one asking the questions in this meeting. Once you've answered my questions to my satisfaction, I will be happy to answer your questions where I feel it's appropriate. And where I don't feel it's appropriate... Get out. Ma'am? I mean it. Get out and I want your badge numbers before you leave. Am I to understand that you've declared yourself a hostile witness? Or that you think you cannot be called to testify against your husband because of your marital status? Because if that is your assumption, ma'am, unless I'm mistaken, your divorce was final as of yesterday. How do you know about my divorce? And that being the case, let me assure you that we do have the right to compel you to testify, should it be your intent to try and protect your husband from prosecution. Protect my husband? I want somebody to protect me! We're willing to discuss that. Discuss that? Well, that's your job, isn't it? She obviously doesn't know anything, Kevin. Why don't we let Mrs. Blake tell us what she knows and doesn't know? My ex-husband is a real estate developer. Commercial real estate. That's it? That's all. Mrs. Blake, your ex-husband is one of the most dangerous and important men in organized crime in this country. And he has a contract out on your life. What did you first meet? What about this man? What about this man? What did you first meet? At what point did Buddy you... Buddy Fruch. Are you sure? sure? How long has it been since positive? positive? At what point did you first... You're absolutely certain, Mrs. Blake. Are you sure? sure. Take your time. Are you positive? positive? It's important that you're absolutely positive. You're absolutely certain, Mrs. Blake. Take your time, Mrs. Blake. Please, take your time. Look very Mrs. carefully. Blake. Carefully. How about... this man? Do you recognize him? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Sunny Valance, does that sound familiar? Well, there was a Sunny in Manhattan. Uh, he, he could always get us into restaurants, even when they were booked. Yes, that's, that's the man they call Sunny. This is Sunny Fiorello also known as Sunny Flowers. What favors did you get from him? Favors? He got us into restaurants. Miss Blake, we have a tape of a conversation between you and Mr. Fiorello. You were thanking him for theater tickets to Miss Saigon, I believe. You were tapping his phone? You were tapping your phone. What? Why? Mrs. Blake, we had a court order issued by a federal judge. Okay. Uh, let, let, let's go back a little bit. We've already established that your husband made numerous business trips to Miami. Is that correct? Yes, he said he was going fishing. He said he had fishing buddies there. What do you know about Mr. Fiorello? Nothing. That, that he was in construction and that he and John had a, a shopping center deal that they were going to build. This is a transcript of a phone conversation between your husband 
and Mr. Fiorello. They were going to build a shopping center, all right, but uh, the money was coming out of Miami. That's why he was down there. Your husband launders drug money for organized crime. He knows the financial dealings of every organized crime family in this country. Now, Mrs. Blake. What is this? That's the transcript of your husband contracting your murder. Blake, you got to keep my son out of it. I don't want him to see it go down. Fiorello, of course not. What do you think I am? I got kids myself. Blake, she drives carpool Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, can't you arrest him with this? Yes. But that wouldn't stop the contract on your life. Besides, with your husband's connections, I don't think we can make it stick. We know that he has people inside the Scarsdale Police Department. The federal government is the only one that can protect you, Mrs. Blake. Now, we can help you if you help us. But I don't know anything. I swear. You already helped us link your husband to Mr. Fiorello, a man he's never admitted to knowing. That's the kind of thing you can do for us. Names, dates, places, things that would punch holes in his alibis and enable the government to obtain a conviction. He's the key, Mrs. Blake. The key to getting all the mob's books. Well, I think I should speak to my attorney. Your attorney? Yes. His name is Heiser, Aaron Heiser. Fiorello. You sure this solves your problem, John? What about the kid? Maybe she screwed you in her will and her sister or her mother or her aunt or something gets the kid if she dies. Blake, no. Aaron knows what's what and he took care of it. Heiser's not going to cross me, are you? You still want to call Aaron Heiser and ask for his advice, Mrs. Blake? Mr. Fiorello did not suggest this. Your husband did. I guess he wanted to look like just another random act of violence. My God. A woman shotgunned, left to die in her driveway. We'll give you and your son new names, Mrs. Blake. New identities if you help us. You mean, you want my son and I to, to just walk away from our lives? To just disappear? It's the only way we can protect you. What do I have to do? Mrs. Blake, are you saying that you wish to be placed in the Federal Witness Protection Program? And that you are willing to aid and assist the government of the United States in the prosecution of Jonathan Simpson Blake? Will we be safe? We'll defend you with our lives, Mrs. Blake. You lied to me! I do not lie, Mrs. Blake. You said the government would protect me. Keep your voice down, Mrs. Blake. So you promised me protection. For your own good. Keep your voice down. No, it's not up to me. If it were, you'd be in the program right now, and I would protect you myself. But you just... It's not up to me. I have to make a report. I will give you my strongest recommendation, but it is up to Washington to decide whether to put you in the program or not. Now, don't you have family someplace else you can go? Both my parents are dead. I have a brother in San Francisco, but he's a disaster. And there's no one else? No. You go back without me, Brad. Kevin, I'll make my report this. from San Francisco. Kevin, you cannot... My call, my responsibility. I'll have to put that in a report of my own. Let me just get my things. I thought we were going on vacation. I don't want to go to San Francisco. Honey, you're going to go visit your Uncle Chucky. Your Uncle Chucky's a mess. Now, ready for morning? 
Honey, could you sit over there, please, and I'll talk to you about this on the plane, please. Uh, I would like three first-class tickets to San Francisco, please. And your name is? Nicholas, Mr. and Mrs. Kevin Nicholas. We only have economy. That would be just fine. I've got, I've got this trip. Don't use your credit card ever again. Your husband can trace you. We've got uh, four bags in a trunk. When you were alone, I've lent you money. Please. I can't. You guys, you gotta go. If we go, you go, Chucky. Quentin Detox. You got nothing on me, man. You ain't gonna get nothing. What are you gonna do, tough guy? Threaten me? I know my rights. Apparently, you don't know my rights, Chucky. I know you. I mentioned jail, you start to sweat. I can put you there any time. Today, next month, next year, any time. Across the border before noon. Right. You're in. We'll leave in the morning. Credit cards, driver's license, social security cards, checks, anything and everything that has your name on it. Anything that can link you to the past. I don't see why this is necessary now. 
Once we've established your new identity, Mrs. Blake, we will issue you a new credit card, a new social security number, etc. When do we get to go back to our house? I'm not sure you understand what's happening here, Mrs. Blake. You can never go back to that house again. There are things I have to get. School records, documents, immunizations. Sam doesn't even have any clothes. As far as your documents go, once we've established your new identity, they will no longer be valid. The government will provide you and Sam with new clothes. The government? What about baby pictures and things that can't be replaced? In order for you to survive, Sarah Blake and Samuel Blake, in effect, can no longer exist. to the airport where are we going i thought it was too risky taking you out through a commercial airport i've got a seaplane waiting for us that way we can control the situation and maintain tighter surveillance white one from white two don't stop over there may not be enough room and make room. Don't stop. That's an order. there to sign. Federal bureaucracy, Mrs. Blake. They live off paperwork. Now these. Aren't you going to read them? What are they? Bank signature card, credit card authorization. Oh. Oh. That's all you have to say? This is how you handle your finances? Oh? Mr. Nicholas... We had an accountant who handled these things for us. I didn't know. I'm just going to take a leap of faith that my government is not going to try and cheat me. Mrs. Blake, maybe your government isn't trying to cheat you. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm trying to steal your money. Maybe I'm tired of my civil servant wages and I'm trying to steal from you. Are you? You're missing my point. Well, then I have nothing to worry about. We're going to plant a few of these around the country. This is a... Signature card for a bank in Midland, Texas. We'll plant a few more things there. Telephone bills, credit card slips. See if your husband or any of his people bite. Meanwhile, you'll be here in Vancouver. Whatever. 
whatever. Yes, whatever. You're the federal agent. Whatever you have to do, do it. I'm behind you 100%. But you have to understand, I'm a little overwhelmed with forms to sign and calendars to look at from three years ago, trying to figure out if my husband was here, there, or where. I'm just a little overwhelmed. Miss Blake, this is how you build a case. No, this is how you build a case. This is how we go crazy. Oh, Kevin, oh, what's with you? What's with me? What's with you? You don't just walk in here, you knock. That's the drill, you knock. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, No, it's not okay, it most definitely is not okay. We institute procedures for a reason. This is insane, you know that? This is, this is nuts. What about the month of November of 1989? How's it going to be? What about it? Did he go to Miami? I'm right out here. Did he make any trips to Miami? I don't know. I, I really can't say if he did or not. I don't know what he was doing in November of 1989. Sammy, please, it's really annoying. Your husband told an investigator under oath that he never left Scarsdale during the month of November 1989. Now think, Mrs. Blake, think. I would really love to get a manicure. All right, Thanksgiving. Was he home for Thanksgiving? That's a big holiday, Mrs. Blake. Most people know where they were and what they were doing on Thanksgiving. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, no, he was not there on Thanksgiving. You sure of that? Yes, he was never there on Thanksgiving. He would always go away on business, and I thought maybe there was another woman. Sammy. That's enough. Ow. Come on. I know you're really bored, but I need you to go to sleep now, okay? Go ahead. I'll be in a minute. Okay? Okay. We'll just have a few more forms, Mrs. Blake. More forms? Forget it. You can wait till tomorrow. These had to do with your houses, your car, your assets, Mrs. Blake. You're a robot, you know that? You don't ever take a break, do you? Don't you see how hard this is for Sammy and I? I just want to get back to a normal life. Most people sell their houses and then transfer their money to their new identities. That's solely up to you. I am not by law allowed to advise you, but you have to make a decision. Sell my house? Why would I want to sell my house? To protect the equity you have in it, Mrs. Blake. As far as the world is concerned, you've vanished. Now, it's to your benefit, to transfer the assets in a way that cannot be traced to your new identities. Well, I, uh... I can't make a decision like this on my own. I think I'd better seek some advice. The Justice Department will be happy to arrange for a consultation with one of our accountants, if you like. He will show you the ins and outs of the whole procedure. I don't know. All right. Case. Just need you to read and sign this form. I'm not going to. It says that I've advised you per regulations that you should move to protect your assets and that I've advised you that the Department of Justice accountant will be placed at your disposal to help you do so should you so choose. It is up to you. This form protects me, Mrs. Blake. It says that I've done my job and quite frankly, other than helping us get a conviction against your husband, I don't really care what you do. How dare you talk to me like that? You're supposed to protect me. I'm supposed to protect you from men who want to kill you, Mrs. Blake, not from yourself, not from your own inability to make a decision or take responsibility. <sighs> My inability to make a decision? To take responsibility? My life is on the line here. My son's life is on the line here. You go to hell! Is 
this normal enough for you, Mrs. Blake? Do you think it's time we were on a first name basis, Kevin? Some of these fish be there. The flat ones are narrow, so they can swim between trees. Just sit there, big white fish, huh? No, they're mammals. The belugas live in the Arctic. They play a lot. See, he's blowing bubbles. <laughs> what else you know? Uh, they whistle to one another and chirp. About one third of their waves float. They live off of it in the winter. How do you know all this? I used to go to school, Mom. Where'd you go to school? Spokane. Washington. I don't know how to explain this all to Sam. He keeps asking for John. He... I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I may be out of place here, but uh, I'd hate to see him end up with your husband. He's not my husband anymore. I was married to him for nine years. I don't even know who he is. Sometimes when we love someone, we see what we want to see. Blake, uh, you probably should think about turning in. Here I am, running for my life. I can't call my friends. I, I can't. What? You're the only one I can turn to. Listen to me. Wake up now. There's been a breach in security. Do you understand me? They got to somebody. Somebody at the Department of Justice. They know where we are. I don't know how it happened, but they're coming. We've got to go. We've got to move right now. Go. Sammy. Honey. Come on, Sammy. Nearest service exit. Over there? Come on. Go.
Braddock. Good, you're learning. I sent him ahead with a car. He'll meet us. How could there be a leak in the Department of Justice? I mean, how could they get to anyone in the Federal Witness Please Protection Program? Please lower your voice. Why, are you afraid our cover will be blown? Well, it's a little late for train, that, isn't all it? Right. file charges before we were certain of a conviction. What? You called me Sarah. Sorry, Mrs. Mike. Don't let it happen again. Safe house. I uh, set it up on my own a while back. Can Sammy play outside here? Maybe. Maybe. If your dress is warm. <laughs> FBI humor. You guys slay me. We've got a mother and a small child here. She's risking her life to help us nail this guy. Now I feel we have a moral obligation to protect her to the. No, that's not good enough. Listen to me. Until you figure out where the leak came from, I'm running this thing from the field, on site, and no one in Washington is going to second guess me. No, no relief team. I want this kept as small as possible, and from now on, we operate on a strictly need to know basis. Yeah, will you try and take me off? You'll answer to the AG herself. No, I'll tell you when I think it's safe. That's right. <laughs> Fine. Fine, you check with the AG. No, I'll get back to you. A.G. Attorney General. You're going 
going to get clearance from the Attorney General? She'll approve it. She owes me. She owes you? Yeah, she owes me. Listen, I want to thank you for everything you're doing, for what you did just now. It's my job. I'm done. Look, why don't you uh, take the car and check the perimeter, then head into town and get us some supplies, all right? How long are we staying here? I don't know yet. Sure thing. You got something to say, Jenks? Say it. For what? For being so hard on you in the beginning. I was way out of line. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. I, I assumed too much. What did you assume? That you'd be spoiled, that you'd look down on the people protecting you. You're right. I am spoiled. in trouble a lot. He, uh, I don't really know what he did, but he wasn't around very much. Neither was my mom. They were alcoholics, and they used to do this funny thing. They used to lose us. Lose you? Yeah, they'd take me and my sister to school or a friend's house or something. I forgot to pick us up. Have you ever been married? I'm not too good with women. Of course, you know that. You're okay. Sam? Thank you for bringing us here. It's got to be hard turning your life over to someone else. I did it for nine years. Sir. You deserve better. You do.
Sarah. I'm sorry about this afternoon. Uh, I just... Forget it. No, I need to explain, please. Hold as hell out there. Yeah. I, uh... I guess I'll turn it. personally involved here, okay? I cannot. I mean, you understand me? I mean, if things were different, I have a duty, responsibility. turned into sharks. Sharks, huh? Yeah. And they started chasing me. I kept swimming, but I couldn't get away. I won't let them get you. I was calling and calling. Who were you? I'm right here, honey. What were you doing in Kevin's bed? I... I was feeling scared too and and I needed I needed a hug. phone number. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna tell him to come get me. Listen to me. Those men who were trying to hurt us, they were working for your daddy. You're lying. He loves me. Honey, he's not thinking right now. He's What happened? I 
told him. He had to know. He did the right thing. I'm sorry. Captain, this came by pouch. Uh, what is it? The Scarsdale Bureau take it off to the local news. You might want to take a look. The president unveiled an eight-point economic package this afternoon that was greeted by mixed reactions in the House. And closer to home, John. Scarsdale-based businessman Jonathan Simpson Blake was indicted this morning in federal court on charges of racketeering and money laundering. Blake's lawyers call the indictment a publicity-seeking fishing expedition. His wife and son have been missing for three months. Blake was released on $1 million bail. Released? This is Nancy McClure reporting. How can they release him? Sarah, the process is working. He's in the system now. He's going to trial. We couldn't have done this without your help. Well, does this mean now that we get our new identities and a new house? Look, it's not quite that simple. Well, you said when charges were filed, they're filed. I know, I know. Listen, we have to keep moving until you testify. He's going to want to find you now more than ever. We should be there around 3.30. Right. Sammy? Sammy? Sam. Sam? I'm sorry, sir. I thought you... But he's under indictment. It doesn't mean he can't file a lawsuit. It's a $5 million house. I know. Two million in equity. Look, try and understand this, sir. You disappeared off the face of the earth. You left some of your assets unprotected. He files a lawsuit. You're not there to answer to it. If you're not there to answer... But I'm not there because I'm here in the witness protection program helping the government. How can they take my house away? The government isn't taking your house away. The state of New York is. Well, is it too late to sign those forms? I don't know. I'd have to check. I'm sorry, sir. Listen to me. I want to talk about it now. I didn't sign on to this thing for the duration. I got a life outside. I haven't seen my family in eight weeks. After she testifies. No, not after she testifies. Right Settle now. Down. Now. Settle down. It's all right for you, right? You're the one that's sleeping with a pal, not me. You're going to be sorry, Nicholas. I don't care what the Attorney General owes you. You're gonna be sorry. What happened? We've been on the road a long time. He'll calm down. He shouldn't have come down here. He in trouble? No thanks to you, Mrs. Blake. Do you mind bringing the car around for us, Brad? What happened? Jenks filed a complaint. Because you hit him? That's the least of it. He told them that we were romantically involved. 
Well, what did you say? You told him it was because he wouldn't give Jenks a day off and he's just trying to get back at you, didn't you? No. I told him it was true. That I was in love with you. I'm not sorry about a thing, Sarah. I want you to know that, no matter what happens. What can they do to you? Anything they want. I love you, Sammy. Sam. Take this up with the Attorney General. Yes, I do. When? Can't you at least give us till morning? Yeah, well, thanks a lot. What is it? I'm being reassigned. What? What does that mean? In two hours, a transition team will show up. They'll seal off the building. Braddock and I will go downstairs, turn over our files, and log out. Fifteen minutes later, a new team will come in. They'll come upstairs to this apartment, and they'll... they'll take you and Sammy away. Take us away where? Once the transition is made, I'm off the case. This is a need-to-know operation. That's the way I set it up, remember? And since I won't need to know, I won't know where they're taking you. I won't know what new names they give you. I won't be able to find you. Quit. Let's quit. I, I want out of this now. I can't do You this. call them and tell them no, we want out. It's not as easy I've as had that. enough of this, all right? I've had enough of this, okay? Yeah. You've got to think about Sam now. You're in more danger now than you ever have been. Your husband knows you're going to testify. I can't. I don't have the resources to protect you anymore. They do. Just give me a minute, would you, man? Sure, I'll be downstairs. Good luck. You be cool, Stan. I'm going to miss you. They'll be here in 15 minutes. You can just do what they say, okay? Come here, Sam. You take good care of your mom for me, okay? Okay. I still have friends in the department.
I'm gonna miss Kevin. sisters until I'm sure it's safe. I just want to make sure it's safe, okay? What do I do? Well, I get to play with him. This is just getting pepperoni pizza for lunch. What do I do without you? It's just for a little while, honey. If you're not taking me, it's because something might happen to you. And if something happens to you, what am I going to do? Nothing's going to happen to me, okay? I'll be back. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry it took so long. Please. something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Could you just tell me where the child is? He's safe. I checked this very thoroughly with the special agent in charge in Scarsdale, FBI headquarters in Washington, and the Department of Justice. <laughs> Mrs. Blake, your husband is not under indictment. That's ridiculous. Of course he is. For racketeering and for money laundering. No, ma'am, that's simply not true. But I saw him arrested on television. What network? Oh. It was on tape. It came by pouch. Do you think maybe that they dropped the case? Mrs. Blake, there is no case. There never was. Look, let me start at the beginning. One, there is no Sergeant Harold Ross in the Scarsdale Police Department. Two, the witnesses in the Federal Witness Protection Program, they're not protected by agents. They're protected by federal marshals. Three, there is no federal marshal named Braddock nor one named Jenks. And four, there is no, nor has there ever been, a federal marshal named Kevin Nicholas. Well, that's, that's not possible. You see, they were assigned to protect me and my son. The Witness Protection Program. Mrs. Blake. The Department of Justice has just confirmed to me that no one by the name of Sarah Richmond Blake is currently, nor has ever been, under the Federal Witness Protection Program. You and your son have been missing for four months, under direct violation of your divorce settlement. There is, in fact, a warrant out for your arrest. What? Kidnapping your child. Oh, my God! Mrs. Blake, it's my obligation to inform you of your constitutional rights, to have an attorney present. No, there, there's been a terrible mistake. You, there's been a very terrible mistake made. Since anything further you may say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Court of law. Court of law. I want you to know I believe you. I believe everything you said. I want to help you as 
spent the last 14 hours checking your facts, running down the data in your statement. Well, your story's incredible. I can't believe you put yourself through this, let alone your little boy. Sarah, I've spoken to the prosecutors and they've agreed to drop the kidnapping charges. Why? Why did he do this? The money. Everything you had. You remember that bank account in Midland, Texas? The one you opened? Well, they transferred everything into that account and back out again. To the Cayman Islands, to Switzerland. And the forms, the stacks and stacks of forms you told me about. The house, the cars, the house up in Aspen. Well, you signed them and they sold them all. Your credit cards financed the whole thing. Airline tickets, hotels, rental cars. Sarah, the truth of it is it's unlikely we're going to recover any of it. Am I free to go? Sarah, I need your help. Am I free to go? If you could just identify some photos for me, please. The only thing we can do is find the men who did this. I need to get my son. First, they put me little kids who couldn't read. They were singing a bunch of stupid songs they didn't know. And worst of all, the only kind of pizza they had is with mushroom. You think it's funny? No. Don't you ever do that to me again? I won't. I promise you come here. Ugh. I have to give you a hug. I miss you. And I love you, Sammy. see the photos. No. 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 That's Kevin. Wilkerson, also known as Kevin Nicholas. Arrests on check forging, conspiracy, fraud, every kind of scam you can think of. One conviction. He did time in Chino, 1989 to 1991. Chino. He had the same cellmate for two years. My brother. That's what she told you. I posed as some kind of a guy from the DEA. Department of Justice. Wow. Did she tell you that we were lovers? Did she tell you that? Why don't you tell us? Yeah, we don't tell we checked into we, we checked in as man and wife. There are plenty of people that would tell you that we were lovers. I mean uh, your son walked in on us one night. I mean, you could ask him if you wanted to. I don't know. You said that you checked in as man and wife because you maintained that was part of the cover. The cover? <laughs> That's Sarah. The truth is, her brother and I were incarcerated together in 89 to 91. You know that. And he introduced us. Anyway, we were lovers for about a year. Things quieted down when I got closer to her divorce, but the day after it was final, she calls me up and says, Lyle, let's go. Let's get out of here. So we went. Aspen, San Francisco, Vancouver. We stayed with her brother in San Francisco. He'll verify that. Look, I... I knew it wouldn't last forever. 
And I figured she'd get tired of me eventually, but for a while it was like I had a family. Sam was like a son to me. We spent a lot of money, I will say that, but she'd just laugh and say, I'll sell something else. Then why did the money wind up in Switzerland? Where did it go from there, Lyle? Switzerland? Wow. Oh, she sent money to Switzerland? God, I love that. Can I ask you a question, Kate? Um, do you have my name on any document that says Switzerland? We have a security guard that will testify in a court of law that you showed him false identification, identifying yourself with the Department of Justice. We were in this hotel. We ran up a big bill. She wakes me up in the middle of the night and she says, let's run. Let's, let's skip out of this hotel bill. So we did it. We, we, we ran. And we, we were going through the laundry, you know, in the middle of the night and this... This guy's there and he stops us and he says, you know, whatever, and I do this, I'm a cop routine. <laughs> he bought it. God, by the time we got into the car, she was so turned on. Maybe that's where she came up with this whole story, huh? All right, we skipped out on that hotel bill. You can verify that. Charge me with it if you want to, but I, I gotta tell you, she was in on it too. How's she doing anyway? Is she okay? Is she in trouble? Kidnapping. You went willingly. What about the money? None of the transactions have his name on them. They were too smart for that, too slick. You sold property to a third party. Your account received the money. Then you, or at least your signature, transferred the money out of your account to God knows where. You heard him? He's got an answer for everything. And without proof, it's his word against yours. Sarah, what about Sam? Can we use Sam to back up your story? No. Sam has been through enough. I don't see what other options you've got. You've been sleeping with the man for four months. How dare you say that to me? Huh? How dare you say that to me? This man, Kevin or Lyle or whoever the hell his name is, he raped me. Do you understand? He raped my mind, my body, and my soul, and now he's going to take away my child? No! You do it without Sam's help. Okay. Maybe we'll find a hole in the story. Okay? But without proof, we have no choice but to remit custody of Sam to his father. You've got to understand that. my child. Please, Jonathan. Can I just talk to you? I have nowhere to turn. Please. 
Why should I? I just need to talk to you just for a few minutes, and then I'll leave. I'm, I'm really no threat to you. You have five minutes. No, it sounds crazy, but I thought you were going to kill me. This man came to me, and he told me that you were in the mob, and that you were going to have had me murdered. That's why I took Sam. Because you thought I was a mob killer? I mean, is this by way of apology, Sarah? Oh, you've got to understand, I thought you were John Gotti. Is this supposed to make me think better of you? <laughs> they, they took things that were real, and they twisted them. They twisted them, and they showed me a video. They, they showed me pictures of people that I knew you did business with. People you had introduced me to. And then they... They weaved this web. No! You believed what you wanted to believe, and you got what you deserved. Oh. I need your help. You need my help. You need my help. Nothing. The man destroyed me. I just need you to hear me out. I'm listening. I know that. I know that. I messed up the marriage. I know that. I know that you're not responsible. I know that it wasn't you, and that you're not like those people. But you, you do know them. What are you talking about? You do know them. That, that Sonny Fiorello person and, and others like him. You, you know those people. Where are you going with this, Sarah? I want justice. I have $25,000 in an account that they never touched. They never touched it, and I have it, and I'm ready to give it to you now if you just please introduce me to these people, please. You are nuts, okay? You ask me to introduce you to Sonny Fiorello so that you can set up a hit on these guys? <laughs> I want justice. <laughs> Sarah? <clears throat> you are the stupidest bitch I have ever met in my entire life. Do you know that? And you got what you deserved. Do you think Wilkerson and your brother could set up a hit like this? Do you think that junkie brother of yours could set up a scam like this? Do you? Hmm? You think about it. You think about it. That's right. That's right. Do you think I would let you take my money, my house, half my business, and my child, and let you get away with it? <laughs> Sarah. I'm the one who set this up. You come to me for justice, and I'm the one who did this to you. And you come to me. You were great to look at, but you were always stupid. Your five minutes are up.
conspiracy to impersonate. You must be joking. No, sir. Just recorded your admission of guilt. I need you to come with me. Well, I have to call my attorney and join No, now. sir, come with me now. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you.